Hey there, everybody. Abolitionist Jay here again with uh, another Abolitionist Abstractions vlog. I think this is number five in the series. This uh, series was intended to chronicle my continued attempts to escape from New Yorkistan and the upcoming temporary but indefinite homelessness I was supposed to be enduring and my travels to the Midwest to try to find a new spot for my family and I and all those things. And there hasn't been much positive news so far, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, the first four vlogs in this series basically covered what I was planning on doing and then some updates that were just, well, run-of-the-mill, government sucks, it's getting in my way, and there's no progress type of things. Today is a little bit different. Finally, finally, I think I might have some good news. I say might because I still haven't got confirmation yet, but the confirmation I'm waiting for is from my real estate attorney who has a nasty habit of leaving me a message, me responding to it almost immediately, and then not hearing back again from him for a couple of days. So just because everything's been really crappy so far, I'm going to run under the assumption that this is actually confirmed because I need some good news, folks. Anyway, on to that good news. Yesterday morning, uh, I actually messaged, I texted my real estate attorney to ask him why I still hadn't heard from him because the last time we had any contact was this past Monday when I was informed that he had actually not just spoken with the potential buyer for my house's uh, attorney, he actually met face to face with this with this gentleman, and I was still waiting to hear back from you know what from that meeting. What if if the buyers were going to go ahead and agree to finally agree to a closing date on this thing? And you know another week and a half went by. I didn't hear anything, so I messaged my attorney, and he said, "Oh, I met with the guy, and he's just waiting for an answer." And okay, or still, I don't understand why we're still waiting here. So yesterday comes, it's Friday. Uh, the 11th, now today is Saturday the 12th, uh, May 12th, but uh, as of yesterday the 11th, I woke up and realized that the contract for the house that, uh, that we're currently under runs out on the 15th, which is this coming Tuesday, and since I still hadn't gotten an answer, I messaged him and said, listen, I'm, I'm really frustrated at this point. Like, I can't even get a simple yes or no from these people. The contract runs out in a couple of days. I'm not offering an extension. I need this house sold yesterday. So if they're going to keep dicking me around like this, then the contract's off. I'm going to let it run out and I'll put the house back on the market immediately because it needs to be sold. I need to be out of here. Of course, it takes me sending him something like that to finally get a message that says, hey, we're working on a closing date looking at May 24th. Does that work for you? Now, of course, the fact that he had this information to give me pretty early on a Thursday morning or Friday morning, rather, meant that he had actually already had these conversations and just failed to notify me. Great stuff. Lesson for you folks. This is why you don't do business with family. My real estate attorney is my cousin-in-law. I've known the guy my entire life. He has definitely kept my ass out of trouble more than once because he's been my criminal lawyer in the past uh, for bullshit that I had to deal with. Uh, he's been my real estate attorney. Uh, this is my second time he's been my real estate attorney. He's done other uh, business law type stuff for me. He's a jack of all trades when it comes to that. So he's definitely helped me out a lot, but he also loves to antagonize me. And sometimes I think he's really trying to gaslight me because um, he knows that it drives me insane that he doesn't get back to me right away. Or not even right away, within the same day. So... Anyway, so of course I'm now I'm upset that I'm getting this information, but happy, and now I'm conflicted because, like I said, I'm going to run under the assumption right now that this is going to happen because I immediately responded and said, if that's the earliest it could be done, fine, but I need confirmation ASAP so I can proceed with everything else that needs to be done because... The house isn't still isn't packed up. I mean, I've been packing stuff as we go, but because I had no closing date, I had no idea of when I was actually going to be vacating these premises. I couldn't very well pack up everything. I need to live. 
even though my kids and uh, and 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 the wifey have relocated to to their apartment for the time being to make things a little easier, uh, I still like to, you know I still want to be able to see them and hang out with them during the day at least. And when they come here, you know I need things here for them: their toys, their extra clothes, you know, dishes in the cabinets for them to be able to eat food and stuff like that. So I haven't been able to pack everything up. And I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting. And I also, you know, have to figure out the storage situation, you know, whether I go with pods or whatever, you know, one of those companies, I have to order that and have it brought here so we can finish packing up and then put everything in the pod and then have it taken away and stored for, for an indefinite amount of time. But again, because of all the problems I've, I've had and all the issues and, and, and the money situation because of the continued delays... I wasn't about to order the pod, you know, a month ago when I thought we were going to close because I can't afford extra months of storage. I don't want to pay for extra months of storage. That's just silly. So I, I needed a date before I could actually move forward with this. So, of course, I, you know, like I said, I responded right away. I said, I need, I need confirmation ASAP. That was yesterday morning. It's now almost 24 hours later, and I still don't have a response yet. But again, typical for my real estate attorney. However, I'm again. I'm still going to go under the assumption that this that that it is confirmed that we're going to set the date for May 24th, which again, on one hand, great. This part of my saga is finally, hopefully, finally going to come to a close. Unfortunately, as I've said to a couple of my friends uh, talking about this in the past day or day, that you know I, I try not to be a pessimist, but in these situations, it's hard for me not to. And my first thought is, man, every silver cloud has one dark ass lining because that's just the way things have gone here. Because sure, I'm finally getting the closing date I've been asking for. I'm finally going to be able to sell this damn house and finally get my hands on the money that's supposed to be mine and has been waiting for me for a couple of months at this point to the, to the extent that I've actually had to stick my hand out and ask for help because we we had no money because this money was being kept for my family and I. So on one hand this is great. It's you know, like I said it's finally happening. We're we're you know we're we're, we're not going to need hopefully not need too much help anymore. We're you know going to be able to have a little money to take care of things. We're going to be able to pay off all the bills. I'm going to be able to pay off the credit that I racked up in this process. However, because of the way this has been set up, sure, I'm finally getting that date. But again, I was told this yesterday on May 11th. The closing date they want to set is May 24th. That gave me 13 days, 13 days to finish everything up and clear out of my house. That's not a lot of time. Even though I have been packing along the way, that's still not a lot of time because I have to get, like I said, I have to get the pod or whatever company I end up going with. I have to get their storage unit here. I have to get everything packed up. I have to make sure that All the utilities are taken care of. You know, I have to call the electric company and the oil company and the water company and have them come in and do their final readings of whatever they have to do so I know what I owe them when uh, when I finally give this house up. And, you know, just everything else involved with moving. And, of course, my situation is even more unique because I'm moving, but I don't know where. Because technically I'm moving out of my house to move into my car for the time being. And I don't know where that car is actually going to be parked on a daily basis. So I don't really know where I'm moving to. So it's a little bit different here. Uh, so yeah, so that time crunch kind of sucks. Of course, it makes sense for everything else that has happened. It's, you know, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. Now you got to move, dude. Now you got to move. That's just the way it's been this entire time. So why not? So, you know, there's that. Like I said, it's, it's great that it's happening. It kind of sucks, though, that it's happening on a very short time scale. Uh, the other thing that comes up from this is that the way it seems that the the potential buyers held out for as long as they could in making the decision on when to set a closing date, because again, as of this coming Tuesday, the contract we had ran out, and it was on me at that point to offer an extension if we still hadn't worked out a deal, and I didn't want to because I was kind of pissed off. But they, it's see, and I'm not. I don't necessarily know that there was any malicious intent here, but you know, again, with the way things have gone with me, it's hard for me not to not to go there immediately. But they want to set this up for 
May 24th. Why is May 24th relevant? Because that's the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend. Now, I don't give a rat's ass about federal holidays or anything like that, but prices are increased for just about everything on holiday weekends because, well, supply and demand. People know they can charge more for things during these times, you know, hotel rooms, all this different stuff. You know, that's standard practice. I understand that. I'm going to start my temporary but indefinite homelessness if this all goes through right before a holiday weekend, though, which makes things a little more difficult for me because it means anything I need to purchase is going to be a little more expensive. And even though I would technically have some money based on the sale of my house, I'm trying to save it. (laughs) I don't want to spend it all here in New York. My plan is to save as much of it as I possibly can so we have it to uh, spend in another state once we finally get the hell out of here. So that kind of sucks. On top of all that, my next court date is coming up. And that is on May 29th, which is the day after Memorial Day. Which means my temporarily yet indefinite homelessness will begin right before a holiday weekend and the very next day after the holiday, during my indefinite but temporary homelessness, I have to go to court first thing in the morning. (laughs) And my original intent was to, you know, live out of the car as I've talked about and I plan on chronicling that, you know, Murder Dog and I hopefully doing at least daily videos uh, you know, letting people know how things are going and testing out the uh, quote-unquote van nomadism lifestyle. And I was going, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've been kind of freaked out, but also looking forward to this experience because I know it's going to be an adventure one way or the other. But I had thought that since, you know, if it came to this and I was out of the house come my next court appearance, that you know, we'd, we'd camp out, we'd stay in the car, we'd, the, the dog and I would do whatever we have to do, but come the night before my next court date, I would actually spring for a cheap motel room so that I could actually get a decent night's sleep and take a shower in the morning and put my monkey suit on while not sitting in my car. Now, of course, this because of the way everything worked out, the next court date is the day after Memorial Day. So if I want to do this, I'm going to have to get a room on Memorial Day, which even though technically it's the end of the holiday weekend, you know all these places charge more for these days. So that's just really inconvenient and, of course, just my luck. So I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that yet. Uh, the wifey is allegedly looking for places uh, because, of course, I'm going to have Murder Dog with me too. So that also limits the places I could possibly stay because not every not every hotel motel accepts dogs. And the ones that the ones that do are usually either really crappy or they charge a heck of a lot of money. We'll see what happens with that. But again, that's just like, you know, just my luck. It's like, okay, you get what you want, but you got to jump over a bunch of other hurdles in the process. <sighs> so, yeah, there's all that. So, like I said, good news, bad news. Good news, it looks like the house is finally going to be sold. The bad news, well, everything I just said, you know. The timing of my uh, my inco- my uh, uh, impending homelessness, uh, the court date, all this stuff, and the uh, the really great kicker to all of this, of course, is that uh, uh, as, as well as not getting a response yet about the confirmation from my attorney, I still haven't actually heard why the permits are being held up for my house, which is the problem that's held up the sale of this house so far, that you know there's a permit that's needed for the second bathroom we added and a permit that's needed for the, the fence that my dad and I built a, f- a bunch of years ago. And I, I think I've do- documented this in some of the other vlogs, but this has already been taken care of on my end. I, I hired a contractor, I gave him money, he wrote, he wrote up the plans and he went to town hall with the applications for these permits and he was rejected there. He was told he couldn't proceed any further because of some other bull, bullshit with these alleged business violations and all this other stuff, which has been taken care of. The inspector came here. He cleared the violation. It's The violation sat on the supervisor's desk for weeks, but then the supervisor claims that that violation isn't a problem anymore. But I still haven't gotten an answer as to why the permits aren't being processed right now. Because the last conversation I had with my real estate attorney was that the only way this was going to proceed is that if the buyers agreed to close 
with the permit still open, but that meant that the contract would be amended to say that I was still responsible for those permits. And in order for me to be held responsible like that, the money that is currently in escrow, the deposit that the uh, potential buyers put down on the house, will have to remain in escrow until the permits are finally taken care of. Now, that presents a big problem because there's currently, I think, like $18,000 in that escrow account. That means I won't be able to touch that until the town finally gets off its ass and finishes these permits. And who the hell knows how long that's going to take? So again, yeah, it's great. The sale of the house is hopefully finally going to happen. That money that I've been waiting for will finally come to me. But once I get that money, or once that money is actually you know transferred over to Wifey's bank account, since I no longer have one, and we pay the real estate agent, uh, you know, her commission fee, we pay my real estate attorney his fee. Uh, I pay off the amazing amount of credit I've racked up in the past six months trying to survive while this whole process has been dragged out. I pay off my vehicle, which is, you know, this. these, these have all been plans along this entire time. So I, I pay all this off. I was supposed to be left after paying all that off. And then obviously the house is paid off now. Uh, I have no more, no more of the utility bills I have to pay. The only thing moving forward I have to worry about until we finally relocate is car insurance and my cell phone bill. Great. Well, after taking care of all those bills and also helping wifey out with some of hers, we were supposed to have a decent enough chunk of money that was going to get us out of here to the Midwest into a new place with enough money, you know, because we're going to rent a place to start out. So enough money for first, last security, all that stuff. And because we were moving to someplace with a much lower cost of living, we were going to be set up with enough money to hopefully survive pretty well for at least six to eight months in case it took that long for uh, for wifey to find w- new work. Because as I've discussed before, the plan is once we relo- relocate is her and I finally switch positions and I get to play stay at home unschooling dad and she goes back to work for a while. So, you know, that was the plan, and, and we were set up like that, which go actually, uh, that now that I'm bringing that up, uh, I will point out that a lot of people tried to attack me uh, for asking for money uh, a, a little while ago when the situation got really dire and saying, you know, I obviously wasn't doing anything to make the situation better or I hadn't prepared enough. That was another thing I, I got thrown at me that, oh, this is, this is your own fault for not preparing. Well, no, we had this planned out. Like I said, we had it planned out where this money was set up, all the bills were going to be paid, and we were going to be left with this decent chunk to help us survive. And, you know, we were prepared. Now, the problem is with this permit situation is, sure, even if everything else goes smoothly, the sale of the house goes through, the money gets transferred, the bank gets paid off, I pay off all the bills, and now that decent chunk of money we were supposed to be left with is cut more is cut more than uh, more, by more than half because the 60 70 percent or whatever it ends up being of it is going to be locked into that escrow account I won't be able to access that either until the permits are finally taken care of and since the town of Hempstead has already dragged their feet on these permits for months who knows how long that's going to take there's no time frame given. There's no explanation as to why things are taking as long as they are. It's just, this is just how the town operates. They, they do things when they want to do them. So, like I said at the beginning, it's hard for me to be, like, ecstatic at this moment. I'd love to be. I'd love to say, finally, of all the crap that's been keeping me here in New York, one of the big things, the house, is finally going to be taken care of. And we're finally going to, my family and I are finally going to have some money again that we, you know, that we don't have to keep begging for help. But leave it to the town that even when things start looking up, they go, oh no, oh no, just wait. It's not over yet, son. So I don't know what the hell is going to happen. 
like I said, I'm running under the assumption right now that the sale of this house is actually going to go through in now, what, 10 days or something? Because today, we're, what did I say? We're on the 12th now. So on the 24th, so 12 days from now, <laughs> I'm supposed to be out of this house and living out of my vehicle. We'll see. Uh, you know, as I've said so many times through this, there's a lot, there's way, there's, there's the way things should work. And then the way things, they actually do work. And unfortunately, I found out the way things actually do work more often than not. Uh, even when the, they're stated to work a different way, it still ends up working against me. <laughs> but that's government for you. Anything they can do to fuck up your life. Thanks, government. Well, anyway, I think I've rambled on enough today. Uh, I did, like I said, I did just want to give that update because I finally had some some news about this, you know, the whole reason I started this vlog series. So I will try to give another update next week. And then depending on what happens, possibly the next uh, vlog after that, or maybe one more, who knows, we'll, we'll see what happens. But a couple of vlogs from now, you should be seeing me in my vehicle. Or somewhere out in the woods, depending on wherever Murder Dog and I decide to set up for the night. Um, but yeah, that's still the plan. Where, you know, once this sale is finally completed and all of our stuff is stored up and Murder Dog and I have just the essentials with us in the vehicle, we're going to take off and we're going to go, you know, we're going to go find a place to stay. It depends on, you know, it's going to depend on the weather and whatnot. You know, like I said, we're gonna. The plan is to bring uh, the camping gear with us, but also leave enough vehicle, room in the vehicle to sleep, and uh, we'll just play it by ear. And then, uh, hopefully, I'll have more information after my next court date. Because again, that's another problem. We don't actually know what's happening yet. All we know is the next court date is the judge's decision about something my attorney objected to during the pretrial hearings, and then we'll finally hear about what's happening as far as a trial or whatnot. So. And that also could come very soon after, according to my, my criminal attorney. He, he told me that, you know, despite the fact that they've dragged this on forever and they've, you know, adjourned and continued and extended as many times as they possibly can, that there's a good chance that after the judge makes a decision, she could turn around and say, OK, trial next week. So who knows? We'll see. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll have enough time to get some people organized once I find out when the actual trial is because I have been in contact with some of my friends who work with FIJA, the uh, Fully Invor Informed Jury Association, and I'd love for some people who are either involved in that organization or similar organizations or anybody who wants to help out to come up here and help with uh, informing the public at large here around, uh, around the, especially around the courthouse, um, about the wonders and... Uh, the uh, possibility of jury nullification. Because, as I've stated many, many times before, despite almost all the evidence being in my favor, you know, the fact that I was on my property, the fact that only an edited video has been submitted for evidence, and when my lawyer, you know, if this comes to trial, when my lawyer finally requests the unedited video, if they actually provide that, it's going to be shown that there was three or four times of me screaming, get the fuck off my property before it escalated to me showing a knife to anybody. So, it, you know, it's going to show that they were clearly trespassing. So all the evidence is in my favor. But this is the USSA legal system. Even worse, this is the USA SSA legal system, New York version. <laughs> so who knows what the hell could happen? So, uh, that, like I said, I'm, I'm definitely going to try to get some people from Fiji or Fiji-like people up here who are willing to help out. Uh, you know, I'd go out there and do it myself, but uh, I would definitely be thrown in jail for jury tampering, tampering if I was out there. But if anybody else wants to come up and help out, get in contact with me. Uh, we're going to try to we're going to try to organize something. And, you know, this is one of those things that, yeah, I'd love for it to help me out, but. I'd also love for a lot more people around here to be to know about jury nullification and know that that's a possibility for any time they're they're called into jury duty. If you believe that it doesn't matter whether the person is is it guilty or not guilty of, of of violating some arbitrary edict, if you don't think that the crime warrants a punishment, you vote not guilty because that's the way juries are supposed to work. It's the way they were set up. 
You're not supposed to just decide right, you know, whether the, somebody broke the law or not. You're supposed to be able to uh, decide what you think of the law itself. So we'll see how that goes as well. Anyway, like I said, it's it's just crazy. <laughs> but that's my life. So once again, hopefully, hopefully the next time you hear from me, we'll have you more positive news. And then a couple times from now, hopefully, we'll actually get this vlog series off and running the way it was meant to be with Murder Dog and I traveling, Murder Dog and I living out on the road and uh, testing some of this stuff out and uh, continuing our hopeful final escape from New York stand. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Abolitionist Jay, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace.